We chose to do our project on Tom Manahi. This is being narrated by Ellen Clegg. I personally suggested this artist because I felt like I could really relate to her after leaving her work. She seemed very stubborn and a bit defiant when it comes to the patriarchy and other norms of society. So that leads us into our featured painting, which is called Red Stripes of Spain. This piece in particular will be referenced throughout the presentation. We'll start off by discussing her background information, although we weren't able to find much online. Paolo Madani was born in 1981 in Tehran, Iran. She went on to attend Oregon State University and earned a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Political Science and Visual Arts, which she completed in 2004. She continued her education at Yale for a Master's Program in Painting in 2006. Her studio is currently in Los Angeles, California, where she does most of her work. She is definitely a well-established artist and painter. She has already received a lot of recognition for her unique and profound work. Her first solo exhibit was in 2007, which was really beneficial to her career. Since then, she has been a part of eight individual and 13 group exhibitions. She has received the following six awards for her work this far. The Keys Verway Fellowship in 2007, the Von den Hinstead Stitching Fellowship in 2008, the Future Generation Art Prize, and the Day of Volks Grant Art Award, both in 2012, Catherine Doctorow Prize for Contemporary Painting in 2013, and the Tiffany Foundation Grant in 2014. And the piece that we have featured on this slide is called Wall Painting. And it doesn't have any relation, you know, to the slide in particular. We just wanted to implement as many works as possible um, because they're all very unique and have similar themes. Now we can look at why this is relevant to our particular course and our objectives as a class. This course is about cultural division in American art. Madani really defies societal standards by highlighting male weaknesses and degrading masculinity. She also tends to emphasize the importance of women and people of color, especially since she falls into both of those categories. She also recognizes the existence of domination by the male sex. Here are some of her other works with similar themes as the one we chose. The one on the far left is Spreading Clown. The one in the middle is called Table Trouble. And the one on the right is called Dirt. We won't go into detail on the all those, but some of the main ideas and components appear to be similar. Most of her art tends to focus on her merciless portrayal of men. She seems to take control of them and make them embody something that is way different from our notions of masculinity. In this painting, Red Stripes with Stain, we can see what appears to be orange stripes falling down on four subjects, kind of similar to green. The title indicates that they are Red, so this picture in particular makes them appear orange. We don't know if that has anything to do with the lighting. The four men, are all, all presumably white, seem to be crawling on all fours. We are unable to see their faces. They are all quite similar in appearance, with very few distinctions between them. And here are all of our reactions. Um, I felt like it was pretty important to include all of them even though this is kind of a lengthy slide so I'll just go through them quickly um, the first one says red stripes with stain is a painting that is done that was done with oil on canvas my first response to the artwork was bewilderment and it made me feel confused I didn't understand why there were four people crawling and at the same time were being stained with red paint from above it made me think of children because of crawling stance of stain and the stripes being stained on people reminded me of prison garments. The next one, at first, this painting really confused me. 
people crawling away from the viewer and the fact that the painting looked orange but the titles had red stripes threw me off. However, after the initial confusion wore off, the orange stripes usually resembles prison or jail, while the people crawling is like how people who are trapped by society usually just slowly move through life. This painting reminds me of the fact that society can define and confine us into conformity. And my response was, I feel like I immediately was able to connect with and understand red stripes with stain. The four subjects in this painting appear to be men. This seems to be a criticism of the patriarchal norms that have dominated much of the world. It seems like the societal roles are swapped in this situation. Instead of controlling people and making men live a certain way, these men are the ones being held prisoner by society. I like how Madani puts them in a very inferior position. The next one says, my initial reaction to this piece was, I was curious to know why these four individuals were turned around and looking away from the viewer. Also, I didn't know if these individuals were old men, young men, or even men at all until I started read about Tal and Madani's work. The stripes looked, they were, looked like they were falling onto the top of these men's heads as if they were objects. I was also confused as to why this painting is called Red Stripes with Stain when the stripes are orange and what the stain is supposed to signify. My initial reaction when I saw Red Stripes with Stain for the first time was that I really, it really reminded me of an old cartoon or comic book. After I examined the picture for a while though, I noticed that all the men were facing backwards in the artwork and the red stripes were actually orange. These things made me think a little more intensely about the message child was trying to get across. It seems that she was trying to portray the, the men as being cartoony and look like a joke so that she could prove that women aren't inferior to men and that men aren't perfect beings in society. So we all had similar reactions to this artwork and we were all a bit confused about the color of the stripes, which I don't think is an accident. I think that it really does signify something, but we're not really sure what. Um, that initial confusion, it could just be her trying to kind of tell us that it's not always what it seems. It's not always what people tell us it is, um, and we kind of have to interpret it um, the way we see fit, and that is in regards to anything in life. For the formal characterization, one common theme or image that we all had in mind is imprisonment. The stripes on the clothing only indicate that they are limited in some way. The clone position also contributes to this notion. They are in a very inferior and powerless position. The color red also stood out to us. This is usually related towards aggression, power, anger, and danger. The placement of the stripes makes it seem like they are being controlled. As for the historical and cultural context, uh, this painting was introduced initially in 2008, and at the time, um, there was a presidential election in which Two women were featured, Hillary Clinton and Sarah Palin. And this has this was really the first time that two prominent women were making a move in politics this big. And it was really good for them and good for women in general. But there was a big backlash by the media um, and just insulting women for trying to defy those gender norms. And Really, there wasn't anything else that we could think of that could inspire this, inspire her to create this piece. But just in general, the overall culture of America and really other cultures too that have been dominated by powerful men. Um, I think she really just wanted a way to make them appear vulnerable and subordinate. Because most of the men in the painting all look like they're white, but we can't know for sure. So our interpretation of the piece, uh, we just felt like it was 
um, kind of a slap in the face to the patriarchy and the, our whitewashed society. Um, and some of her articles, or some of the paintings that she's done, uh, she talks about how she wants to kind of change the perspective. She kind of wants to put um, those powerful prominent figures in a more um, subordinate position, just just so that she knows what it's like. Because she knows that she knows that she can't do that in real life. She she knows that she can't occupy those positions and have that privilege in real life at this time, at least. Um, so that was kind of what we what we gathered from what she said and just our reactions. Uh, she just really wanted to uh, focus on the more privileged, privileged groups and kind of put a different perspective on things. The evaluation, we chose to do the emotional approach because uh, the other two weren't really relevant because there were definitely a lot of emotions and a lot of thoughts and opinions and feelings um, that we were able to gather after viewing uh, this painting and other paintings as well. Um, I know that myself, I was really empowered when I first saw this and really the other ones too and just the moods that she um, she made me feel, it uh, kind of made me feel angry, not at her, of course, but just kind of at the way that our world is, um, and it kind of made me want to do something, it made me want to change the way that we think and the way that we view our society and our individuals. And this is just a list of, of what we all contributed to this project. Um, but we all definitely had pretty much the same uniform reactions and opinions, and we all did very well working together. So thank you for listening.